from Little Glitter. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to the Miss Lillian's page. I am Krista from Litter to Glitter, a furniture artist out of Garland, Texas, for now. More on that. Well, I'll just tell you now. We're moving. And uh, we're in the process of looking for a house, and it, uh, we're looking like 50 miles away. So anyway, for right now, I'm out of Garland. So uh, new, well, what, Sunday is the new month, and I just finished up the Fiesta cabinet. I have not gotten it staged yet. Again, we're house hunting, and so time. Anyway, um, I'm starting a new project, <laughs> and it's right behind me. I am starting on this, and it's going to be a peacock theme. And so the peacock theme um, is pretty much where I'm drawing my inspiration from, my colors, things of that nature, um, making sure my tablet is down. There I am. Um, I'm pulling up my tablet. My son is on the stream yard, so I will be able to see your comments. And so what I am doing today is let's discuss prep. So I started off with Miss Lillian's first step prep um, and gave it a good cleaning. And then I gave it a good sanding. And then I cleaned it again. And then now I am doing my base coat. I do plan on blending this piece. And so whenever I blend, I always do a base coat because as you're blending, if you don't get a full coverage, you will see underneath. And I don't want those wood tones to come through. I don't want the wood to show. And uh, I was a little bummed because the way my camera angle is, I got to sit on the floor. So you're going to see me doing this a lot. Anyway. So I wanted to go over <clears throat> some tips for this because this is an older piece. It, it does have a harp top um, that is not attached right now. Um, and we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. And we're going to be picking colors. And um, I'd love to hear your ideas. And I've got some stencils and I've got some transfers and I've got some um, uh, 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 molds that I'm going to be doing on this. And we're going to use all the things all the things and we're going to be doing a lot of different methods on this one hey i see that ann from indiana is on hey ann thanks for joining me lady and so one of my go-to's for my base coats when i'm blending it's a color called seaside gray and i think i put it way out of my reach and absolutely i did so uh, all right so one of my go-to colors for my base coat, um, and if you've been following me for a while, I call my base coat my crumb coat. And so I am using Seaside Gray as my crumb coat on this. Um, I've already pulled the two bottom drawers, one's here, one's sitting right there. But I wanted to show you guys some tips on when you are doing this, is that as you can see, the drawers on this are pretty flush. Even though it's older, it's very well done. I even have the original key. These actually lock and I have the original key. I was so excited. I couldn't believe I picked this up for what I did. Uh, we bought this at the flea market in Tennessee um, when we went to Tennessee on our last trip. And I think we paid 40 bucks for this dresser. And it is an amazing, amazing shape. Um, I pull, when I do my base coat, my crumb coat, I pull my drawers out because... Say you your drawers sticking out a little bit and you do it like this and you paint. If somebody and see it's very flush, but if you were to have one that is not flush that maybe sets back even just a little bit, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that wood grain on the side of your drawers, and I don't like that. So what I do is I pull my drawers out when I'm doing my crumb coat and I get these little sides in right here. Now, this one is down to bare wood, um, so I'm not going over any type of factory finish. I even got a lot of the stain off of it when I sanded, and so this wood is thirsty, and I have been having, uh, I did the sides already, and I did, um, I did do two coats because the wood on this is thirsty, and it is just drinking the paint in, which is fine. Um, I'm giving it, I'm just giving it what it needs. It just needs a little bit of love and that's what we're giving it. We're just giving it some love. So, um, spooky season is upon us and I see a lot of crafts that are coming out now, you know, 
Make sure you don't paint your hair in there. Yep, I did it. I admit it. That's why usually I try to pull my hair up when I'm painting. But, you know, sometimes hair goes rogue. And so, and so I am just giving this, in these areas here, I don't worry about having, you know, a perfect coverage. I just want to give it just enough to cover. But on the sides, I wanted to make sure that I was really, really good about the coverage. Um, just because when I'm blending, it may not, when I'm blending, it may not cover everywhere. So I, I don't want these wood tones to come through. So with this one, you can just reach up underneath the bottom, pull the drawer out, set that there, and I will keep right on a rolling. And I also want to get up underneath of the slip. Sometimes I feel like you got to be a contortionist, stand on your head um, in order to Hi, Kimberly. I see Kimberly's watching. Hey, Kimberly. Um, you got to be a contortionist sometimes. And a lot of times when I'm working on a project by myself, I will turn them upside down and paint them upside down first. But for the sake of argument and time for today, I did not do that. And so I'm making sure that I get up underneath because you never know what angle somebody is going to look at this piece. And you want to make sure that you've got a pretty good coverage everywhere. So if you guys have any questions at all about what paint I'm using, colors, if you've got questions about other Miss Lillian's products, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you as we go along. I have my minion with me. Austin is here running my stream yard, like I said. Is that the chair squeaking? What is squeaking? The door? Something outside. Huh. All of a sudden, I heard a squeaky. See? Oh, yeah, it's not the chair. I was like, we got to get that thing oiled up if that's the chair. So, Again, yep. the reason that I'm painting the sides is to, of the inside is so, I'm wondering if it's this. It is that. It, yeah, it's the piece. I'm yelling at you, mama. It is. It's trying to talk to me already. So this base coat, uh, the reason that I use Seaside Gray, it is, it's squeaking at me. It's like the, the, it's got the wheel legs, the little inset with the wheels on the bottom, you know, the old dressers and it is squeaking at me as I'm painting. It's like, cause I'm moving it. And so, yeah, it's squeaking at me. Delania says, Hey, Hey, hey. hey Delania. So we are, like I said, I am, um, this one is going to be like a peacock theme. And so I am using the seaside gray because I seaside gray is a lot like a uh, bohemian queen for me in the miscellaneous colors, but seaside gray to me is a great color. It goes with almost everything between the blues and the grays in it. And since I am going to be using blues and greens and some golds and everything else in the peacock uh, with this one, um, I wanted to have a base coat color that if it showed through, it wouldn't be like it. And so I'm fine that seaside gray for me is a great color to use for bases, especially when you are doing other blues, greens, um, eat grays. Uh, it looks good with your blacks. It, it, I mean, there's not a, I haven't painted seaside gray with every color, but I have yet to find a color that I went, eh. Um, and that takes me to Bohemian Queen. Bohemian Queen, I'm finding out that I have yet to see anything that is blended with Bohemian Queen, whether it be oranges, reds, purples, blues, greens, violets, um, uh, grays, uh, black. It doesn't matter. I have yet to see something blended 
with Bohemian Queen that I didn't go, oh, I like that. And so it's a very versatile color for me. And it's one of those colors that kind of goes with everything. And so that's why I use Bohemian, or not, I don't use Bohemian Queen as my base. I use Seaside Gray as my base. And so that's what we are going to be doing on this. And so, like I said, we're going to be adding stencils and we're going to be adding molds and we're going to be adding uh, transfers and all sorts of stuff. Maybe some glitter. Um, haven't decided exactly how far we're going to go with this piece. Um, well, I have decided, but I haven't decided. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I am going to go as far on this piece until my husband walks in and goes, that's enough. And so I might just keep covering it so he doesn't see it until it's done, until I'm happy. But I'm going to take this piece as far as I can go with it. That's my plan. So that is my plan on this. Um, and I, uh, we have, we are looking at houses. We found a house that we really, really liked. Um, we haven't put a bid in on it yet. There's some things that we need to make sure with the seller uh, before we do place a bid to see if certain things need to be done. Um, nothing major, but they've got an above ground pool in the back and we don't want the above ground pool. Um, and so I want them to remove it. I don't want to be responsible for buying the house and then removing it. I want that done before. And so we're just, like I said, we're just trying to get some concessions straight before we place that. But in saying that, when we saw the house, um, really well-maintained, beautifully designed, and this one had some colors on the wall. And they had a piece of furniture in the dining room that was very similar to this. And it was, in, it was painted in a beautiful, beautiful blue. And I was like, oh, if I did a peacock piece, that would look gorgeous against the wall that they have an accent wall that's a deep blue. And, but I'm starting off with my seaside gray right now and building up from the basics. So let me go over some tips while I am getting my base coats done about, um, prepping your piece and why and certain reasons why you should do certain prep because I'm going to be sitting here and let me see if I can tilt you. Can you tilt down just a little bit Austin so they can see down here, down here. That's good. So I'm going to be working on my drawer fronts now and discussing with you guys. Um, uh, Anne says, hi, Austin. Um, you want to make sure that you always clean your piece before you sand. The reason for that is especially older pieces like this, you never know what they were cleaned with throughout the years. It could be, um, you know, uh, just wax. It could be, you know, wax based cleaners like pledge and stuff like that. If or, uh, you never know where the piece sat, it could have been, um, you know, in a basement, it could have been in an attic. It could have been out in somebody's barn. Um, Delaney says, I can't wait to find a vintage piece like this. Girl, you need to go see uh, Sue up in Tennessee. This is one of the ones that we picked up at the flea market. And this one we only paid $40 for. And it is in wonderful, wonderful condition. And like I said, it's got the original key. Uh, the top two drawers have locks in them and we've got the original key. Um, but going back to prepping, you want to make sure that you use a good cleaner like the Miss Lillian's first step prep. What's that's going to do is that's going to get all of the gunk off before you, before you sand. The reason you want to clean before you sand is that if something was spilled on this piece, the wax, any of that stuff, as if you are sanding, then what you are going to be doing is you're going to, you might push that stuff further into your wood and that's not what you want to do. You want to clean as much of it off 
as you can, get it nice and clean, then get it sanded. And then I clean again to get the dust off and everything. And it would be behoove me to put my paint on the side where I can reach it. And instead of, you know, doing Pilates to try to get to it, because uh, Chris had not been that way. And then um, clean it again. That will get all of your sanding dust off. Um, that will also get it ready again for it to the, pr the prep for your paint. And then you are going to go ahead and start your painting, which is what I am doing right now. So, which all of which I have done this morning, I have cleaned it, sanded it, cleaned it again and started painting it since this morning. Um, it's not a hard process. Um, it's not a difficult process, but it is a very important process. And I am just going to throw this out there in the universe. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there that will tell you, well, I picked this up off the curb and I threw paint on it and I sold it for 70, you know, the one, the one day flips, please do not buy into that hype. Um, can it be done? Yes. But in the long run, if there's anything on that furniture and you never cleaned it, you know, the paint could any, any brand of paint will flake off of it. I mean, if it's covered in wax or an oil, like some, if somebody had their essential oils in it or perfume or makeup, or, um, you know, could have been in somebody's kitchen where it's got bacon grease on it. You never know. Prep is so important. And a lot of people skip over prep. And it is by far one of the most important things that you can do for a good flawless finish is making sure that your prep is good. You never want to sit there after you have put in all your time, effort, energy, money, uh, your creative ideas, and you've spent all this time. And then, you know, in six months, you're sitting there and it's flaking off. I just want and I honestly, I don't care who says that it's a no prep. There's some prep. You, you have to clean your pieces. You have to at least give them a little scuff sand. Now, if you're doing something like a mirror, you can't scuff sand a mirror. You just can't. But that's why if it's something, Delaney says, yes, prep, 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 always. Yes, ma'am. Um, if it's something that you can't sand, like it's an Ikea piece or it's a mirror, that's why Miss Lillian's has the uh, first, not, uh, la, 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 blah, blah, blah. has the pro stick is for stuff like that. So if it's not a solid wood piece, you're going to want to use a product like the, um, eek, the pro stick, sorry. And then you will be very, very good to go. So with wood pieces, you're going to want to sand, even if it's just clean and scuff sand. This one had some stuff on it where it had been, uh, I guess it had been in a storage unit or something. And it had some stuff stuck to it. And I didn't like it. So I, I brought out the big guns. I brought out my big orbital sander this morning and took it to this and the drawers and to everything else. And probably on the inside of these drawers, I will probably hit them with the, um, it's a product by Miss Lillian's called Fresh Drawers. And what it is, it's, it's a renewal system. It's uh, a fragrance. You can get them in, uh, there's, I think there's 12 or 14 fragrances. And I will hit this with the inside of these drawers with the Fresh Drawer product by Miss Lillian's. And so, like I said, we're going to be using all the things on the, on this dresser. We're going to be using all the things. Um, and of course it's me. So I'm sure that I'll be using some sort of glaze, uh, because it's me. And if you followed me for any amount of time, you know, I love my glaze. I love glazes. And so I'm making sure, cause this one, like I said, this is, this is not vintage. This is an antique. And so on the sides of these drawers is pure raw wood and uh, not even sanded raw wood. It's 
just pieces of wood nailed on the sides. And so the paint is drinking into it and which is fine. Make sure I don't have any drippies down here. Get that, move that one and I will eek. Yep, I can see where it's kind of drinking it in because that the wood on this drawer is thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty. And so we're gonna put this one. And since I have, I'm just gonna stick that baby in there. I'm not gonna stick it all the way in, but I'm just putting it back up in there. Enough to where it's uh, up just a little bit, Austin. And so just enough to where it's in and um, it's not, this one's not rubbing the sides or else I wouldn't have put it in if it's still wet, which come to think of it, I probably will leave them out, but I'll leave that one in there just to see. What's the worst that could happen? So I'm going back on to my next door, just doing my, my crumb coat. And then I will come back and as it, when this coat dries and I see how much it drank in, I will apply another coat to it as well. And so if you are familiar with the Miss Lillian's brand, um, you know, she has an extensive, extensive line of colors. And, but so, uh, I guess what I'm saying is that, you know what a peacock feather looks like. Send me a message, put it in the comments about what colors you think that I should use. Um, the ones that I am thinking of using, of course, they're up there. Um, I think it was Stella Luna. Um, uh, is it the four that's sticking yes, out? Yes, the four that's sticking up right there on the, yeah, the shelf by the steampunk skull. Okay, I'm thinking about using Stella Luna. And this is Ocean Depths. And Christmas Holiday Leaf. And Mulberry Pie. And those are just kind of my dark colors. I need to get, I will be Limelight. She said, uh, Delania said limelight. I may use limelight. I need to get kind of a brighter green in there. And I haven't really decided. This um, this piece came together for a peacock theme yesterday. Um, and like I said, we were out uh, looking at houses. And that's when this one kind of came up. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, my son just says, how about this one? This is called Suburban Seas. And so I'm going to put this one in the pile of possibilities with these other ones. Sour Apple. Um, I think Sour Apple might be a little bit too green um, of that, you know, that limey green than what I'm looking for. But hey, in, you know, when I get off the live here today, Trust me, I will get in there and I will start pulling colors and think about what, how I want to blend it. I know I don't want to do a straight blend, which is straight across. Um, I think I'm going to do more of maybe a layering technique or I may do the blend of similar to what I did on the uh, piece for the girl's home, the mermaid dresser for the girl's home. And so I may go that route. I haven't decided. Nothing's decided other than the fact that I know I'm doing a mermaid piece on this and is my inspiration. And that um, I'm painting the, pa the base in Seaside Gray. That's the only thing that's a permanent. Um, I'm waiting for the piece to talk to me. But, you know, I haven't given it much time to think about what I want, what it, what I want to do to it. So we are uh, still in the early planning stages, but we will figure it all out very, very soon as we continue to work on this baby. Was very, very impressed with how well built this is. I haven't found any maker's marks or anything on this. I could tell that there was on these antique and vintage pieces a lot of times there would be um, 
really thick paper that was like tack nailed to the back. And I can see that there is something like that back there, but it's been ripped. And so um, that probably is where all of my information was on who was the maker of this piece. I haven't found any maker's marks yet. Um, as I was pulling drawers and stuff, I thought maybe I could find something on the inside or on the bottom of the drawers, but there hasn't been anything. But it is definitely, this was not something that was manufactured. This, this piece was definitely one that was built. This was not a manufactured piece. This was a built piece. And if you've been in around furniture painting long enough, you understand what I'm saying. This piece was built. This piece was uh, crafted. This piece was not manufactured. And it's still really sturdy, great wood. You can tell it had a little bit of a rough patch, but it's okay. It's in my hands now. And we're going to give it, give it some love. We're going to give this pretty lady a new dress, as we say. Give it a new dress. And if you... Here on the sides, you'll see me tapping, and that's because it is the raw wood. And I want to get down into that raw wood. And so you can just tap, tap, tap the end of those raw wood areas. And then go back over with a longer stroke, and it will fill it right in. And when you look at it, once it's... I guess this would be called it slip if we're talking, I call it a chrome coat, but if you, if you are more clothing based, then I guess we are putting on the pay coat. We're putting on it slip. And so we are just getting a nice, good coat on there. Come on, get in there. More paint, more paint. We did have the opportunity to take some time on Saturday. We, my husband and I took a class on how to do mandalas. And that was a wonderful, wonderful class. And I'm hoping to play with the mandalas more. And when I get comfortable, I will share with you guys some of the stuff that I learned in my class. But I hope to do a... I want to do a entire piece of furniture with like a huge mandala across it, but I need to get better at the little mandalas before I decide that I am going to go full bore and do like a whole piece of furniture like that. So let's not, not yet. I just, I don't want to do it. So we are, I've got this one and one more. Um, this is the one of the two long drawers. So it's got two small drawers up top and two long drawers on the bottom. And it's really pretty wood. Um, it's just got a lot of little surface flaws that I want to cover up and like I said, I'm, well, I'm a furniture painter, so, it, but it's, it's nice wood. It's good wood. And we're going to, like I said, be using all of the things because we are going to be, again, we're going to be using uh, stencils and decoupage and we're going to be layering and using different products. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about doing um, is that to put a base coat on the top of this use some um, stencils and use like the cabinet paint, which is a different consistency with a different color, and then go over the top with stain. And because it'll stain each, the, the color, this and everything, and it gives it a really neat look. So I'm thinking about doing that on the top, um, doing the blend, doing the transfers, using the molds. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I am going to be doing with the harp that had the harp. Uh, it originally, this had a mirror harp top with a mirror, 
but the mirror was not in this piece when we purchased it. Um, so, but I do have the frame and so I still need to decide if I'm going to attach the heart top or if, you know, what I'm going to do with that. So, so when you think, um, I see Lisa is watching. Debbie Davis is watching. Hello, ladies. Also, do we have any comments from Twitch or YouTube? Or? No. Okay. So, again, we've talked a lot about prep today. Um, if you have any questions about prep, please reach out. I am one of those people I would rather you ask. Um, I, when, before we closed our shop, I used to tell people, especially first time painters when they would come in and they're like, well, I want to try this, but you know, I'm a little bit worried too. And I would say, okay, this is what you do. You know, when that hair on the back of your neck stands up, if that happens, stop and call somebody, me, send me a message. I will, you know, I would rather you ask the question and be sure than to do something either out of order and possibly, well, if you're a first time painter, you want to make sure that you get everything right. And so I very much believe in, I've got what, 30 some years, 40, well, did the first piece when I was 16, I'm now 50. So I've got 20, 36 years of refinishing furniture under my belt. And I probably made the same mistake that, you know, you might be getting ready to do. And so if y'all can learn from my, my mistakes, if you can learn from me being an idiot, I take that as a compliment because I have done some stuff that I'm like, you get in there and somebody will come in and start talking to you or you get called out on something um, the dogs decide that they need to go outside, whatever the case is, and you get distracted for whatever reason, you walk in and you think, okay, where was I? And you pick up the wrong brush or the wrong product and you make a mistake. Been there, done that a lot. Um, so like I said, if you can learn from my mistakes, I wear that like a badge of honor. Wear it like an absolute badge of honor. Delania says, I'm so grateful for all the help you've given me and the friendship we have. Oh, thank you, Delania. Oh, man, this side is really raw. I don't know if I can get that on camera, but can y'all, I mean, this thing, this side was is just, can y'all hear that? I mean, that is raw, raw wood. Oh, I almost made a dad joke. Can we call it cheerleader wood? Because it went raw, raw. I'm oh, sorry. I'll see myself out. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. It, it's me. Delaney said, yikes. Is that yikes for my dad joke? Or is that yikes for how rough that side is? Yeah, so this one is going to be a lot of stippling in on the paint. But this is how one of the ways that you know that you've got a good solid wood piece that uh, is going to last you, you know, fam in the family for another hundred years is it is solid wood. Oh, Delaney said for how rough it was, how rough the wood was. And so, yeah, this side is, wow, this side is rough, rough, rough. Oh, I shouldn't bark like that. I'll get my, my dogs like to bark and I call that my home alarm system. They're my home alarm system, the way that they bark. And so to get into that raw wood, you just kind of keep stippling, stippling, and then long stroke to even it out. And you want to load up your brush a little bit more when you are dealing with this raw wood. 
and you can do little circles on it. I didn't realize that side was so rough of wood. Or else maybe I would have hit it with my sander, but but it's the side. I wasn't paying attention to the sides. I was trying to get the top right. I was trying to get the top and the front done. Because like I said, all this was done this morning. And sure, get right there. And then I'll get the top here. I will get the other side. I mean, you can see here how good the insides of these drawers are. And I'm going to, like I said, we're going to use all the things. We'll be using the fresh drawers on the interior. Um, I will probably put Duro Shield on this one as well because it will probably go in the um, utility room, I'm thinking, or in that dining room. And so I want to make sure that it's got a good, good, good strong coat on it um just because well husband kids dogs enough said and we are we got this side and i've got one more drawer but i know you guys i will um be back on next monday at two and we will probably start with I think I'm probably gonna have my base blend done by then I think I'm gonna do my base blend tomorrow night on uh, painting with whiskey and women and then I will do my top blend on um, next week and so I will ask you guys and for a little love because uh, as we are moving I don't know when that'll be like I said we haven't even put the uh, an offer in yet we're waiting on stuff but this is going to be a big move for us because I have to move my studio we have to use move uh, my husband's side hustle um, his office and the entire house so it's going to be a long moving process so there may be some times that I won't be able to be on with you guys but I will do my darndest and what's funny, guys, is, here you go, a little tidbit. Um, if you have been a follower of Miss Lillian's for a while, you know that a couple of months ago, uh, I had a friend, Sue, come in from Tennessee, and I had to drive down to Austin to get her from the airport. And on my, I actually had to drive down on a Monday. So I started driving down there, um... Monday and I stopped at a Bucky's on the way down to uh, do my live. I did the, my live that Monday from a Bucky's parking lot. And uh, we, the house that we are looking at is down near that Bucky's. So yeah, it's, it's a ways. And so let me, we did find a place, Kat. Um, I was saying that we are waiting, uh, like they have a swimming pool in the backyard and above ground that we don't want. And so we, hey, Tammy. And so we are trying to see if they will remove that before we put in the offer. Um, and so we are waiting to hear back from the seller um, about some certain things before we make an offer. Because if I have to take down that pool, um, they're going to get a lot less offer because if I have to take that down myself or if they're willing to take it down, then, you know, I'm willing. So we're just, that's where we are in the process. That doesn't mean that somebody else won't place a bid as is and get the house, but I'm just, I'm not in any really big, big hurry. Um, if this house happens, then great. If not, then it wasn't meant to be. And I'm not going to stress out about it. But there are, so there are some th certain things that we're asking for. So did we find a place? Yes, but we have not put a offer in yet until we hear back from the seller about a couple of things that we want to make sure of before we place a offer on the house. Um, so 
again, I am doing the base coat in seaside gray. This is going to be a peacock theme piece. I'm doing my crumb coat for this. So, uh, ah, told you guys I had to sit on the floor. Y'all going to hear all sorts of weird stuff coming out of my, oh, eek. Um, Austin, can you put it up just a tad, the top of my head being cut off? I didn't realize that until just now. Y'all been just talking to my, my glasses. Anyway, that's good. Thank you, hon. Or, oh, hello. That's good. All right. Um, so we talked about prep a little bit earlier in the video today. And we are talking about all the things that we're going to be doing on this. I'm going to reiterate it and then I will wrap up for today. What we are going to be doing is this is our crumb coat. And I use seaside gray because seaside gray is a one of those colors that is my go to for base when I'm blending, especially if I'm blending blues and greens and purples and stuff, because this grayish blue is amazing. And I have yet to found something that I've done a blend over that I didn't like. Um, and so I'm doing my crumb coat in the seaside gray. We are going to be using the Miss Lillian's Fresh Drawer. On the insides of these drawers, we are going to be using transfers. We are going to be using stencils. Uh, we're going to be using molds on this. Uh, so we are going to be pretty much using all of the things. We will be using paint and top coat and glaze and probably some gilding jewels on the moldings. Uh, so we will be using all of the things on this piece. And if you didn't catch it early in the live, I will say it again. I am going to go as far on this piece until my husband walks in and says, you're done. Um, so I plan on using a little bit of everything. Um, and so that's what we are doing wanted to thank you guys for joining me. I know that Mondays are hard. Hopefully I can bring you guys some comic relief, get you guys a little Monday chuckle and maybe some knowledge. And uh, we can always come back and see who survived the weekend. So I don't know. I saw some of y'all's Facebook posts this, uh, this week and whoo, some of y'all did this weekend upright, baby. I saw it. So I'm glad um, one of y'all's in here. So mm -hmm, I saw, I saw what you did. You lucky, you lucky girl. Anyway, cat. I'm not saying, I ain't telling you he was the naughty girl. That's, that's, that's none of your business. Nosy. So my lovelies, I will be on painting with whiskey and women tomorrow night at uh, seven Eastern six central. And I will be back on here next Monday at 3 Eastern. That is 2 Texas time, y'all, for a, another Miss Lillian's uh, video where we will be starting to do all of the cool stuff since we got rid of the, this is the hard work, is the prep and the base coat. And next week, we are going to start with the fun stuff. We're going to start doing, like I said, the blends and the molds and the transfers and the, the the jewels and the glaze and all the things. So I, again, I'll see you guys tomorrow night. I'll be back on Miss Lillian's next Monday. And if you got any questions or comments, make sure to reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Make sure you're checking out some of the other retailers that, uh, uh, that are doing lives for Miss Lillian. Some of them are so talented. Um, it seems like each one of us has kind of our own little thing. And so um, Chastity DeGroot is amazing for uh, her Moo Paint. Uh, she's definitely the Moo Paint queen. Uh, Kylie is amazing. Uh, Linda does some amazing stuff too. It seems like we all have like our favorite little thing. So you can pick up tips and tricks from them that I kind of just go, you awesome girl, you go. And I even watch them for some tips and tricks on some of the stuffs because they're awesome. So, my loves, I will see you all next week.